Okay, thank you very much and welcome to the KCP community meeting on March 14, last couple of days before KubeCon. Um, as always, uh, this meeting is governed by the CNCF Code of Conduct, which boils down to let's be excellent to each other. And with that, we have a couple of things on the agenda. So I, uh, so Stefan, you have ideas around relative and absolute workspace paths. Uh, do you want to share your screen with something or should I just bring up the issue and we talk about it? Yeah, it's basically the PR that uh, MJ started. Okay. That's so the question it. is, how are you, so the, the workspace paths we pass to the QCutter plugin, they're, all, they're always either relative but just one level or the absolute, and he wants to add uh, yeah, basically multiple levels of dot dot, which is not a problem, but if we start to um, have like a relative, but not dot dot, but a relative pass over two levels, like foo bar, for example, foo column bar, this model does not work anymore, because foo bar means, Foo is the root bar is basically the first child. That's what we de defined originally. Basically like root colon, but uh, it can be anything and it's always absolute. So the question is what we will do there. Uh, dot dot is uncontroversial, but next step is basically to extend that and then it's not consistent anymore. Yeah. So. Yeah, and we played around with some ideas like you could, uh, yeah, basically we, we redefine what an absolute pass is on the command line, something like a colon or a slash in the beginning. So basically colon or slash, uh, it doesn't really matter. We, we chose colon in the beginning, but we could support those. So if people have the muscle, the muscle memory for, for slash, then it's fine. That's not the problem, but, uh, uh, yeah. You mean uh, to define the relative path, you would need to start with a slash or a colon? Yeah, I mean, uh, so go, if you use go run or something, then you need a dot, right? Say yeah. use something for a relative path, basically. So they, they have the, the inverse from the shell. In the shell, you need a slash for absolute, but nothing for relative. Go is different. And we are somehow, yeah, we have to decide what to do. So I, 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 I wouldn't move forward with dot dot if we don't have an idea what relative paths are. I mean, if we, if we try to follow like, let's say like Linux, like, like how it works on your command line, um, I guess like if you start with a colon, that would make it an absolute path and everything yes. else could be a relative path. Um, question is if we want to do that or if and, we want and, to. And root could, could also be special. Like we have root for, for reasons, for history, historical reasons. Root could always be absolute in theory, but yeah, otherwise, what do you say? No. Yeah, there's. Uh, root, uh, but the root workspace ahead. could also contain another root workspace, right? That's the name. No, it's, no it's, so what we can do, we can define uh, different roots. So a multi-rooted, uh, like it's not a tree, it's a forest or something like that. And the root mm -hmm. is just one of them. So uh, imagine users, users code on uh, Stefan. So Stefan could be a logical cluster and it has a, uh, KCPIO path annotation, and by that it will be a root. So the, the indexer and uh, the proxy will understand this is a root because there is this annotation. Sure. I was asking because currently, if you do like KWS root, it's taken as an absolute path. Right? If I just say go to the root workspace, it's always taken as an absolute. Yes. And this is also true for anything else. Basically, in the, in the moment you have a colon inside, it's absolute. Yeah, but without the colon. 
If I do yeah, so, AWS exactly. root, I go to the root workspace. If I do this AWS is special, AWS exactly. Foo, exactly. Exactly, that's special. And I always found that every, special to weird. Every other, every other uh, root in this forest, like users, colon, Stefan, it must have two components. If it's just one, so you cannot go to users. Users doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Ah, now I get it. That's, okay. that's a trick. So we kind of cheated. Ah. Ah, uh, okay. I, think I'm, I might be missing something in my root forest implementation too. Like I create these roots with a random name. So in theory, if I should do it right, oh, you, if I do. Yeah. I think like this is a special combination of characters and like the example here, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you have no way to go back. Is this correct? No, like, no, no. Up. So this is the different one. Like my question would be like, if I did it wrong, mm -hmm. and if I should like, this is a, this is the example of forest trying to implement a forest. So if I did it wrong, and I don't have way to come back, or if I should be, if I'm in this path, and I do VS use root. It should be redirect to my root, but like how to know what is my root in this case of my current path? Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Like we could make root relative, but this is also, I mean, it's something like the dot and dot dot, like hard links, right? That's yeah, another okay. idea one could do, of course. But then you can still not switch trees, right? In, in the forest. No, no. So I think the switching trees are service side implementation. It's like as a service provider, if I'm providing a ability users to switch trees, there is a separate command which basically updates the CLI based on that. But as a, on the core level, if I giving somebody a root, which is this arbitrary numbers in my case. I need a way to come back to my root, basically. Yeah. And today, if you make it a name with a colon, you can go back because the CLI implements that. Yeah. And this is where I had a different one. It's like if I, if I can share a screen for a second. Um, so in this case, so I'm in the my own route basically. Uh, logical cluster. So that's my my route, and we could basically move to the last uh, last workspace. But in case if you do these things with, as we do with home uh, folders, where you have a home colon user or user colon something, it's like how to know that my root is now not uh, users, as you said before, but users colon something. So if somebody introduces a hierarchy in their root clusters itself, and it's not the first element in a path. You don't know how to come back to that too. Yeah, so that's that's a prereq. If you want a tree in the forest, there must be a colon inside. That's what I said. Like otherwise, the uh, UX is broken. But we're we're talking about the the, the broken thing is in the plugin, right? In the kubectl plugin. I, I think it's mostly the plugin, yeah. Probably, yes. Because if it's if it's an, uh, a value in a field, then it's always absolute. There's nothing about relative today. Yeah. So, like yeah. in the PR I raised, I'm trying to introduce some kind of relative path navigation and multi-levels 
is like my first question would be is this something we want to try merge potentially introducing a, a slash or column in the beginning so then to tell that it's a like dot slash potential or dot colon which would imply that it's a relative path i i think we should do the other way around have like a colon in front to say it's an absolute path and keep the like this is this is how it works with, with tools like cd right if you change directories you need the slash in front to say it's an absolute um but would that would be breaking change to current behavior uh only for the wait only for the root thing though no because right now it already Oh, ah, no. Okay, I see. Every, every non trivial pass. Yeah. And this is why I kind of did it a bit like more. I think the go away might be closer here, like dot something, dot colon, dot slash. But yeah. <laughs> So that's the one. Like we can need, we need to just choose pattern either like introduce go and don't that's, break it. So, break so it. the other alternative is we, we also actually if you use slash right, we could have one way, and if you use colon, it's the old way, but this is <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, so we want to document something so I can adjust the PR because at this point I'm lost. <laughs> um yeah, I, I mean. I, my perspective on this this is I would I would prefer to break the current situation so we get in line with the whole like topic or the whole theme of hey like your workspace tree is kind of like a file system that you can navigate and that would mean like follow like these like CD kind of syntax I, I think like I'm I'm not sure if we should like keep our behavior just because that's how it, is and we are still at zero dots in our releases so i'm um, not sure if we should cho choose stability over following like the like general conventions that probably a lot of people would expect here yeah i think my finger memory would prefer cd1 too yeah, so uh, so just just so wait, so just that we agree, let me uh, let me go to the PR and let's write down some examples. So what I'm thinking of is well, something like and then you have A D C like this is your like like multi root kind of thingy and then you know org A team B whatever. So this is an absolute path, right? Mm -hmm. um, because it starts with a column. So that's our separator. Um, so if I did the same thing, uh, let's see. And very, very important, if you don't have a colon, it's already relative, right? So kind of a precedence already. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, true. We just extend this one case or um, switch it over to the relative. So, so the, the the case that you mean is essentially this one, right? Where you have like this yeah. long, like this path segment, and like before it would look. Well, what would it do right now, actually? The, it like, will it will go one level in, not two, and that's a problem too. What What do you mean? No. Like if you, yes, like if you do Last the time. second command, yeah, it will not jump you in the theme B. It will try. To it, or I don't it? think. I don't okay, think. Let's, while you type, I'm going to try it. No, access denied. I said this is uh, if you jump it to try to jump it uh, relative path, even from root to levels, there is a problem that it says like permission denied. Yeah, because it wants to, con uh, it's an absolute password. And this doesn't exist for you, probably. Yeah. Yeah. If but it existed, it would work, but it's unexpected, maybe. I don't know. 
Yeah, so so the, to, to complete this, like at least from my perspective, like the same call that we have here could also look like this with the like dots in the mm -hmm. beginning, because that is the reference to the current workspace that you're in. That's another way to do like a relative, like exactly like the CD semantics. And dot dot uh, also works, like also mixed with names. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it would be something like, for example, if I wanted to go uh, to the, like, I don't know, like an org B, it would be something like, so I, I would go from the, yeah. uh, if I was in the org A workspace under this like tree root, um, then I would go one back and then back into the org B. And then it could also be some wild things like this. Uh, <laughs> so, and then you are back in the workspace that, that you're in. Um, mm -hmm. if, we, if you start from okay, but that's that would be like completely valid. And I would, I would also like at least to have a warning if you say root code on something like the old, the old common case, we could warn in standard error. We do the new thing, but we say, okay, it changed. Did you really mean that? And Especially when it's not successful. Um, one, one curious question, can you even create workspaces with the name root as child workspaces? That's a good question. Maybe we disable that uh, for, for it could be. Yeah, we, we could still print a warning though. Like, I think we should, yeah. Uh, yes, you can. Okay, then we need a warning, yes. Yeah, th this would be the semantics that would bring it in line with changing directories. Okay. So I... how this, so if we use root, we give a warning saying don't use it, basically? No, we, we, we follow the new semantics, but we write a warning before. So, I don't know. Warning. Ah, and, and, this, this mm, one, yeah. This kind of. Gotcha, gotcha. And, we, and we could decide whether we only do it if it fails. Okay. So the first part of your write-up until new line, I think it can do it in a current PR. For the second one, uh, like go, for the going back step, like going back into something else, yeah, this one, I will need to move to the separate PR because it needs wider refactoring. That's fine. I mean, as long as we have the same direction, the vision, the goal we want to be at, that's fine. Um, what about slash? Do we think we should allow that? Amount of times I type slash instead of colon is uh, way too high. <laughs> this is why I, I mean, we, it in the first place. <laughs> so in the, in the workspace path, which we are in our rotations, for example, we never support slash and yeah. we never support the colon right in the beginning we we could give a warning and we could uh, drop a file in the dot config which would be like suppress warning no, 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 I, i'm talking about the api like everywhere we, where we have passed oh no no api don't no they're, no they're don't. always absolute and apis don't support it they're always absolute always full path let's not yeah. over and always, get always our lives there Yes. Okay. The slash is only for navigation on the CLI just to. Yeah, and it's never printed. It's always just as input and then replaced by columns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I could see that. Cool. I like this. <laughs> okay, great. Sanity um... check. I think in a few months, will you? we will have forgotten about the colon, right? Or the new colon will just not be strange. I think so. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Do you want to say anything else regarding this topic? No, I think that's it. So my one is, 
the, we had a second part where, like when I have a non-user friendly root name, it's like I'm I don't want to name roots like org one, org two, because this is kind of leaks a bit of information too. When I give this random string generated as a root for the user, I would like a way to define somewhere when your user says uh, use and just slash or a column like go to my root directly yeah yeah so basically it's the same tree but so root. yeah so but where to that. define that root name in a like it needs to be somewhere stored potentially in a cube config so oh, uh, all the logic is depending on the path that's the current one ah so we, we can move back to the first element but this means uh, we don't support if somebody constructs uh, something like this, like a slash plus. Where is the agenda? I type it there. So if somebody does something like this, um, like you roots Bob my root, and for the for the user one, I'm giving this my root. It's the root because this one's like my company abstracted things mm -hmm. or something like that. So slash currently would try to to root it oh, to yeah. this one. We have but the tilt, right? So tilt is, is a is a yeah, I know, fake yeah. workspace endpoint. And it does it has a hard code at home something. It basically and this, knows what it's and this could be configurable, I think. Could be alternatively maybe we can introduce another symbol like i don't know we could i don't know use like a dollar sign or something yeah but this is non-standard again right i'm not sure i mean does this play a role for anything but your home uh, for example you have your home and you have your org workspace do you expect a shortcut for your org workspace i I don't think I would like something to have that to be honest. Like home is like your home folder. You go in and you play around. And after that you jump back to your org workspace. Mm -hmm. So how to define that like bullet points, bullet points. Like currently it gets this like users uh, prefix hard coded. Mm -hmm but how do i come back to my previous random stuff so i was thinking that for these cases in a cube config we provide a, a context where we have this current previous uh sub and this which is like slash root and we put a url of uh, my root and we never touch i don't basically. i don't like those extra contexts i mean for for the for the dash like switching between two it's quite natural but for anything else it's getting complicated or we, just just say, we can but that's the thing like it works fine in a two case the current situation if i don't provide users a home workspaces mm -hmm. means we can't jump out of my organization tree and two if I have the single uh, word uh, cluster path slash cluster something, so I can parse out path and get to the root one. But if I break any of those conditions, it's like, I don't know where my root is. Organization root. Now you have to remember, basically. Yeah. And. <laughs> And this is basically it's a, a pure UX question, right? Which character, mm -hmm. <laughs> which character is like natural? The tilt everybody knows. But the character and where to store it? Because as soon as they jump to my uh... no, 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 we don't have to store it. We we could do something. You could walk back basically. You could make the CLI go level by level upwards until it sees this is an actual route because there's annotation yeah but uh, how you walk back if you jump to the home workspace 
like users, my username. If you jump to like if it is but a then, password, then I'm asking, what about you have three roots? Uh, you want another character for the third one? This password? No, that's that's yeah, the yeah. thing. Like I've another idea which we have long time is basically swim links to have. Uh, then you have in, in your home, you have a swim link to your office and stuff like that. Mm, that could solve the problem. The, mm -hmm. That could even solve the multi root problem because every root you have access to becomes a sim link in your home directory. Could be. That's a, that depends on the system you're working on. But in, in your case, when you build something where this makes sense, sure. Good. I think that's that's even that even might be better because now you have this one place where you can put things it's, in. It's a bit like in, in in Windows when you go to this uh, network environment. What's the name in English? Like where all the network drives are. It's also yeah, something yeah. which you reach from the from the root somehow, right? So they have it in, in some sense. Uh, th this would be a server side logic, right? Or would this yeah. be something? Yeah. Yeah. That's custom. Some controller which creates also links. I mean, okay, out of course, let's, of course. Let's let's leave this one. I think for now we got sorted on the first one, but the second one. I might give a start to the sim links implementation. See how hard it is to do it. Yeah, it's a special. I mean, you work on mount, right? Mount mm -hmm. is another special case, and this would be a third case, a simling case. Yeah. So it's not a real workspace, but somehow, like, yeah, some kind of different workspace. Red with redirect potentially, maybe even. Yeah, and the CLI I would understand that. Would see, okay, this is not a normal workspace. I have to follow. Yeah. Yeah, the, the server information would just basically be the path that it's pointing to. And the client yeah. would look at that and do it on the yeah. inside. Yeah. And yeah. replace its its cluster uh, paths, right? It's not not a hard link. It's really just move over. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. I think that might need some more work, but it uh, sounds very promising. Um, but I think we yeah, I think we should probably move on. Because we have a couple of more topics on the agenda and I would like to get to every uh, if we can. Um, okay, then the next one on the agenda is something that Sebastian suggested. He can't be here, uh, but um, the since a lot of people will be at KubeCon, um, and there's the youngest member of the uh, maintainer team. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, um, I, would that be something that people are interested in, first of all? And then how can we find a slot that works for everyone? Do you, do you think about a, a meeting or do you think about some dinner or so or lunch? Um, I, I don't have any thoughts on this at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think whatever like we prefer. Um, we can. I'm. I'm not sure what the situation is with you know the breakout rooms are probably reserved for people that I don't know for for projects or for for sponsors. Um, so maybe like a, a dinner might be easier actually. Um, what would does anyone have preferences? Anybody leaving Friday, or everybody staying overnight and leaving next day? Leaving on Friday. Me too. So, yeah, I guess the evenings are well booked. When when is the party? That's which one? Day. I mean, it's a big one. Whatever. Uh, I think Cube Crawl is Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But this is that's in the building, right? In the main building, just getting beers and stuff. I think so. I was going to either that might work, or maybe we can just. Uh, meet for lunch on one of those conferences, like Wednesday or Thursday. Like at the conference venue itself, you can just grab the bag and then eat together. I'm not sure I heard everything. Everyone, can you 
Can you repeat? You're oh. not so loud, so if you can. Move. Okay, I, I'll, just, I'll just speak a little more loud. Um, I was suggesting like maybe we can grab the lunch bag on either Wednesday or Thursday and sit together. In it. That might also work out instead of uh, dinner. Yeah, I mean, we can do that. I, I, I mean, if it's possible, I would do a dinner personally. Not sure what the others. I mean, fallback would be what you say, right? We grab lunch and go somewhere. Maybe we should start with what days people are available. Let's say if yeah. we take evenings. Like Thursday, I'm booked with the company thingy just after our talk so thursday for me is out okay i'm free uh, on wednesday and then thursday so wednesday works for me Let me quickly check when I need to be at our booth. So, um, if Wednesday is not the party day, uh, yeah, Wednesday is the with the one with the cube crawl. So, yeah, but so it's just there's just a beer you get there. Yeah, and it's also from just from six to eight. So we could also yeah. say after that. Um, so. so Wednesday sounds potentially promising. Yeah. Let's start a thread in the Slack and make it fix there. What Wednesday sounds like might be an option. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And the swag for two of you, I think I will, if we don't meet before, I'm going to bring to the conference and drop at your company's booths. Or we can try to meet before and I can hand it over. Doesn't matter. I mean, I think we wanted to meet anyway to run through the talk once. So uh, probably a good idea yeah, to do that. We find a place. Contributor Summit Cube, is anybody there? That's Tuesday. Yeah, Same, Marvin. You can yeah. try register too. I, I it, yeah, Tuesday you said right. Uh, yeah, I'll probably spend most of that at Plant for Engineering Day. So, and I don't think I can attend because I'm not a contributor yet. Yeah, and I think it's also too late. Um, Maybe you can join. I don't know. I say, I, if you have a ticket, you can just go there. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Stefan or I can sponsor you if you want to come in. Hmm? Say again. Uh, either you or me can sponsor Marvin because we. Ah, are okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's possible. Yeah, he can officially register. I'm just looking Plus, like if the registration is open. Okay, I'll, I'll take a look. Plus, KCP is now part of Sandbox. So your contributions counts. You can register and get in easily. It's highly encouraged. All the people from the Cube ecosystem are there. So okay, I'll take it. It's worth it. Interesting. I, cool. I'm I'm dropping the link to the chat. Just in case you decide on registering, like, let us know. We have to drop an email like either of us. Ah, uh, perfect. Okay. Um. You probably would need to do it today itself or tomorrow because the registration is close a couple of days before the event to decide on catering. Yeah, makes sense. I have the link open. I will look at it as soon as this meeting is over. OK, thank you very much, folks. That's, I'll, I'll take a look. Great. Cool. Um, then, OK, we will like move the logistics to Slack to discuss it with everyone who might want to attend. Um, the next topic on the agenda, I just wanted to follow up on the OCI credits thing. Um, OCI here is not the uh, uh, the the like format 
specification, it's the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure one. And um, the so my understanding, MJ, you looked a little more into this, but my understanding is that um, the like OCI is sponsoring uh, credits for their uh, for for working on them on on OCI uh, to CNCF projects. So this is something that we could use to host some of our infrastructure. Um, which I think at the moment we were thinking about moving CI there um, and also hosting like a kind of like public access platform that people can uh, try things out with. Was that accurate so far, MJ? Yeah, so I was thinking if we can request it to build it something like a public playground where we purge workspaces each and every week and things like that for demos and just playground environments deployed from master things like that shouldn't be a lot of work considering we have a evolving helm in quite nice direction ci stuff if we get in like managed kubernetes cluster we deploy kcp on top of that and we could deploy prow too but the prow stuff it's a question for you guys, I think, if you are willing to manage it on based on Oracle Cloud too, because I'm lacking experience in managing that guy. I mean, we don't have experience with it. it's be, we don't have experience with OCI either, but if there's a managed Kubernetes service available, then ideally we just point the automation in the KCP infra cluster to a new kube config. And you know that would be more or less it. So. Okay. So if people not, people not against it, let's try to get it. I think. I'm very much pro deploying code master always to some pro, some environment and testing it real instead of this one. So this might be it. Yep, agreed. Um, have you been in contact with them already? Yeah, they had dropped me an email, so I need to respond now to them. Okay. If you if you want to like pull in the others so you don't have to like deal with them, mm -hmm. just add us all to the email set. Um oh yeah, we'll do. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. And then, well, once we have that, we can look at uh, working on the inference automation part of it. Okay, cool, great. Anything else regarding OCI? No, if I think once we, if we give it, we can start thinking how to most effectively use it. Yeah, great. Then I think, uh, Nabun, I would like to pass the ball to you. You have a topic. Yeah, so I wanted to talk a little about API conversion using webhooks. So based on the discussion that we had last week, I was tinkering around by adding the conversion field to APIs or schema. So up till that, it is working fine. And API channel, so I made changes so that it works fine. And then the bound CRDs which are created, they also do have the conversion field with the webhook URL now but still like it's not working. So I'm wondering, and I had a question like, do we explicitly disable some plumbing, which uh, like removes calling conversion webhooks, like API machinery does. So I tried with like normal CRDs by creating a CRD in a workspace and then creating custom resources. So, where conversion webhooks from there work fine, just like they do in Kubernetes. So I just wanted to bring this up in the meeting to understand more uh, how how does it work internally? Can I can I get some traces from the request response cycle to understand it better? Uh, basically, needed some guidance there. I'm not aware of anything explicit. All that is in API extensions API server. So if you see the conversion webhooks getting through the to the binding process and ends up in the shadow CRD, I would expect it to work. 
So, uh, Stefan, is there a way that I can list all CRDs from the system, bound CRDs? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, is there a specific identity that I can assume? I, I think there is a implicit logical cluster called system colon bound CRDs, bound minus yes. or dash CRDs. And yeah. if you go there, you should be able to list them. So but of course, you must, be, you must be Sorry, system master. Right? So. Oh, I need to be system master. So is it like system colon masters or system KCP masters? No, it's a system master from Cube, it's the same group. It's a group, it's not a user. OK, so if the user is in a system master's group, I can technically do operations on that. Yes, purpose. yes. Okay. And so, you should see exactly so, what, what you want. Yeah. OK, so the Cube config battery that the admin cube con the admin can config that is churned out when I do uh, KCP start locally with no other options like a development KCP server, that does not have access to this uh, workspace. No, so the default user. There, the default user doesn't. Uh, okay. I think we call that a shard admin. And I think we create a cube config. It's just not used usually. But it's in the .kcp folder if you start it, I guess. MJ, maybe you know more. I don't know. No, it's, it's being removed. But like, if you use system master, you need to interact with a shard directly, not via clump, via front proxy. Oh, yeah, yeah, also this. <laughs> Well, I, I don't have any front proxy running. I'm just running the KCP binary, just doing development testing to make sure so, like I have a proof of concept. Check in the KCP dot KCP directory when you start a normal KCP locally. I think that's shard admin, and talk to the shard directly, not through the front proxy, and then you can go to system whatever you like. Okay, so I just listed like all files in dot KCP directory. We have a dot admin token store. Admin cube config API server cert and key and then SA dot key. Is is shard admin like SA dot key the shard admin key? Um the admin cube config that is in the directory has multiple users, um, including one shard admin. Oh, okay. So I think you might like switch contexts around. I think it I think there should be a context generated with the shard admin user. Um, oh, this, is, this is interesting. Yeah, I see a context called shard base. And one more called shard admin. Awesome. That, that is great. I, I will try this out. Thanks for this pointer. So you might, for, for accessing this special workspace, you might need to like manually mess with the URLs. In your cube config, but I think you just need to reference the right user from that cube config because there are two. Yeah, I I was just trying to find the right identity through which I could like list and do operations in that workspace. So so Stefan, uh, to summarize, like what you're saying is, if the bound CRDs end up having the conversion fields populated correctly, then it's all Kubernetes API machinery that will take over, correct? Yeah, at least I don't know anything which which should uh, forbid that or stop that. Of course, oh, it can be back. I, so, sure, I, I try tomorrow and report back. And I I link one second in the code. And put a link here. This is a package. All the logic is there. So if you want to put uh, printfs, whatever, to understand what's going on. That's your place, your package. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I've just been trying to play around. So far, like adding the schema and everything is working fine. API gen changes are working fine. Uh, I put a print in the print in the bound CRD when the bound CRD is getting generated and created. So I saw that that does have uh, the conversion fields now. Mm -hmm. Whether it is persisted in etcd, I'm not. I'm not sure. So I will uh, use the shard admin context and then uh, go to the workspace and see what is happening there. Yeah. yeah just for the, just for the notes. Um, this was the thing that you mentioned, right, Stefan? Yes. Okay. All right. Then, do we have any other topic? I don't so, believe. 
while now Barun, you, you you have a thread where we talked in the slack about that you're building basically the api export and api binding controller to life cycle them a bit yes yeah and i honestly like, i had the same issues here and i was thinking that uh like it i think it's something which could end up in a core if people agree with that mm -hmm. But maybe just a wider ask if anybody would be against if we try to add a potential a separate controller to help lifecycle API bindings and exports. But update them. Yeah, I I would actually love that happening in upstream. Um, so I tell you the change that we did was that we are running a control which is listening to API bindings and workspace type changes and basically act on act according to that so we are taking the exact same code which is there in the api binding initializer controller and but running that for updates and deletes as well uh, the reason it is not working in that initializer controller is, i i figured that is because the rest config which is used by that informer is an initializing workspaces uh, config it points to one of the initializing watch pieces and hence once the initializer is taken out uh of the workspace it doesn't get any events for those so that's what i figured uh i'm not sure like if that is the exact loop um but we are solving it that way and in our downstream mirror we basically added an annotation that i want to upstream right away. yeah uh, so initializer this initializer thing, this was intentional. Like we didn't want to extend what this thing does, this mechanism. But I can totally see, and this was always uh, in the vision, uh, the export could, I don't know, um, could have runtime lifecycle features. Like you could say that keep all bindings always bound or something like that and update it. Or even disable it and have an additional lifecycle controller, which is custom made. So these kind of things were always in scope. So, and I think this is still true for core. So it's a question about a API export or a lifecycle API, probably in the export. I think it's different, even separate controller, we flag it with a feature flag, which basically watches workspace types API exports bindings and acts based on those. There's there's one special case uh, permission claims. We so some things were not done because if you define permission claims, you don't want that you suddenly, as a user who bound to an API, suddenly gets uh, grants permission claims to somebody else. So binding APIs, updating APIs, I think is yeah. Just let's do it somehow by an API and in the, in a, in a controller. But permission claims, we have to think more about how this works. Like if your API suddenly needs secret access, um, just because somebody bound to your API, this shouldn't be automatic. Yeah, no. Permission makes sense that this is out of scope. I was thinking more on the like, uh, I create a new workspace type. I added these API CRDs, basically, which I'm watching on and everything. And if I add a new type, I would like it to automatically get Makes propagated sense. everywhere. Uh, yeah. But what happens if you remove one, for example? Like, there are some questions about uh, how much do you want to grant to an API export owner? And this is why we put a separate controller behind the feature flagger and iterate. <laughs> Yeah, that's, th that's why it is, it is a highly special use case that we have right now. We just want to reconcile the default API bindings part mm. of the workspace type. That's why we did not think of like upstreaming it right away, but it's like if upstream wants it, then we will do it. So there was one concept we, we plan to do, uh, something like an API deployment. So imagine the export and the bindings, they are more like pots, right? But you need higher level concepts. And API deployment could be something like give two of your users the new APIs, let them experiment and test them. 
and like a canary and then move on and do another deployment for everybody. So it would be nice if you think yeah, in, in, in around those those ideas, like higher level management, API management APIs. Yeah, I think API that's deployment the, was the term. Yeah, I think it's KCP matures this all uh, builds like a good story around like API upgrades and life cycles altogether. So, so um, yeah, sorry, sir. No, just it's welcome. So, okay. please. So, so for for now, what I'm thinking is to have the least amount of changes. I'm just going going to add an annotation which is created when the bound CRD is created, and add a block in the current API binding admission plugin to check if the Requested API binding it has that annotation, and the request is of type update or delete. It will just deny the request. Would that be fine? I'm so not sure this, will not, this will not do the update and delete as of now. Like if you change the default API bindings and delete one of those because the controller doesn't exist yet, but it will at least protect. Uh, so there are two parts of the problem, right? So right now, even if we specify like five different uh, API bindings in default API bindings of a workspace type, there is nothing which stops someone to go and like delete that API binding from the workspace, mm -hmm. and no mm -hmm. one will be able to like reconcile. So that that I feel is kind of a bug because it kind of goes away that oh hey this is a default API binding it should exist. In this workspace, but somebody can delete it and it would never show up back. So, first part is like protecting against deletes, and the second is like even if someone with like heavy super user access goes ahead and deletes it, we reconcile updates and deletes and add it back. So, in a way, it, it feels like the current workspace types have, they feel like workspace templates. And we're basically talking about like having a stronger, let's say, typing, where the workspace is always expected to look like how it is defined in the workspace type, right? In a way, yes. I think calling it a template is also available at this point. Sounds sounds good to me as well. Maybe really behind a feature flag that you can toggle how workspace types behave. I would like to see a API sketch for that. Uh, the controller or the first part, the protection mechanism. Yeah, if if we extend the, the templates to something long term, so persistent, something which reconciles forever, we call it API lifecycle. Is this in this is this link there, like an API sketch and a discussion of problems? Okay, it's a PR yeah. policy. I tried to have a look at that, I never saw that. It's an older PR from last year. Yeah, that's an old oh. PR. Yeah. So. I think it is uh, is the admission plugin change uh, as a PR so that you all can review. And then we can probably discuss the other aspects. Yeah, maybe. If it's not too much effort, my discussion might be better informed if you just throw a PR or a Google Doc with a sketch. But from what I understand, it's a very minimal change. So maybe PR and we take it from there. Yeah, the first part is not a very big change. It's total, I guess, 20 lines of code change. Just the implementation. And maybe I need to, I need to add some tests or modify some tests. Yeah, I, I would like to see some thoughts about like protection 
for the lesion, this looks like a bigger topic, like a more general topic. And we kind of have that already in some areas. So for example, for, if you have an export, you own the export, you can have this maximal, put, um, maximal permission policy, which is in this direction because it also limits. So I wonder whether we can have a more general concept to restrict what somebody can do in a workspace. Like we want to give yeah. people access, but there are certain things they shouldn't do, right? And you as an API export owner should be able to control that, at least for those APIs you provide. Yeah, I think that is a much bigger epic, you know, like that would require some design. But yeah, it's it's totally in scope. Let's put something down in a in a Google Doc. It doesn't have to much just the API you propose or make a PR, whatever. Something that we see what is planned. Sure. Uh, to start with, like not proposing any new API per se. Uh, we're trying to work with like whatever is there existing in the system. But I look at the references that you put in, and uh, probably we can take it forward from there, like as a long term. Yeah. Okay, great. We have run out of time. Is there something that anyone wants to add to that topic or in general? Okay. <laughs> Can't wait to get one of these stickers. All right. I would love a few of them to bring back here as well. If you have extras. Yeah, I I have like 700. So I think we can spare a few. But that's a lot. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Uh, that was a nice Thank you. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.